After this weekend's slate of games, it really should be two players left in the race for the Heisman Trophy. Travis Hunter, who came off with another interception this weekend, and Ashton Genty, another game with over 127 yards, 30-plus rushes, and three touchdowns against San Jose State, another win on Boise State's record. This guy is doing some incredible things, so let's dive into the tape and talk about what makes him so special and why not only he's a candidate to win the Heisman Trophy, to have one of the greatest seasons that we've ever seen at the running back position in college. Now, Boise State uses a lot of gap and zone schemes in their offense. They really do a good job of letting him be diverse and multiple. And what I love about Ashton Genty is that he's so good at creating for himself through the play. He's very play conscious. This is just a GY counter. You've got lead blockers coming this way. And Genty is not the most, I would say, the burstiest or the fastest guy in the world by any stretch. But he doesn't need to be. He does a great job of following his blocks and setting up blocks in the process as well. So you've got here, the blockers are coming out. You've got number 66 gets on his block, heads down. Tight end's coming through here. And Genty's just going to keep widening until he knows that block's coming across and he's going to get upfield. This is what you want to see from that GY counter position to be able to get into space. And then... You notice how guys are kind of falling over him as he's getting into space. Why is that happening? Why are they not running through to create that tackles or get around his ankles? And this is exactly why. Because he's so good at manipulating angles. So right here, he's in space, right? Sometimes you'll see running backs just keep going straight up the field. But one, he understands that he's got a blocker right here. So what's he going to do? He sees number six coming downhill. All right, cool. I got a guy coming here. So he's not going to just run straight forward. He's going to kind of lean inside initially and then you're going to see very late a defender come from this side as well so he's creating arm tackles through the angles at which he's accelerating up the field and this is one of the in my opinion underappreciated parts of his game is that yes he's good at running through tackles and things like that but he can create arm tackles so he's going to come here and then go back to the right as soon as he gets up there so right there you see him kind of keep going up that way and then he cuts back around creating two different sets of arm tackles and then he just bowls over the guy that's being blocked by his receiver downfield that's so great understanding how you can do those different things and then just continue to bowl through guys who are not going to wrap up and tackle you and create more yards after contact so being able to be really sound from a running concept position and then being able to create those missed tackles forced all the time is, is what makes him so special. And then that, that ability to just kind of see what's happening unfold. Right here, you got a little bit of an outside intention with on a little bit of an orbit motion coming across here. They're going to have that outside intention of the outside zone. You're going to see him kind of turn his shoulders when he gets the, the ball. And then right here is where you're going to see it. So he, he sees what's happening from this outside angle. So they're going to blitz multiple guys off the edge right here on the right-hand side of the defense, left-hand side of the offense. And when he sees that, he's just going to cut it upfield immediately. So he's able to see everything he wants. He's got really, really good vision. He uses his peripherals well and all of these different angles where he sees blitzers coming, where he sees pressure. He's able to generate a lot of different movements. And that's what I like about his, his kind of reactive athleticism and his reactive ability to kind of see what's happening and just run based off of that so right there he's even setting up number 44 to get blocked as well so he's coming inside and then he sees that linebacker come across and he's like fine i'm just gonna juke around you too so i love that ability right there and again to just kind of see what's happening that curve that curved linear acceleration that he has as well and like i said he's not the burstiest or fastest guy in the world but he's able to like accelerate through curves and you love to see a guy who's able to do that with that ankle flexion and the hip flexibility to be able to do that he does not super tight from that running perspective so i really like that and appreciate that about his game now short yardage stuff i, I, th I still think he tends to run a little bit high i mean he he, he kind of does for a smaller guy and a stockier guy in general but i think he understands exactly what he wants to do so you've got a big offensive line. That's all what they're doing right here. Everyone's down here on the line. You've got one receiver out wide. So that creates a pretty big box, right? You've got basically all these different defenders crowding it. So almost a, you, you want to extend it maybe outside a little bit close to a nine man box, probably closer to eight. They're going to motion the wide receiver out to the left here on this jet sweep motion, create more of a split zone feel to the play. And then you get a missed block from the tight end right here. So you have missed block here. Genty's coming into this gap right here. And then you have to be able to get lower, right? So he's not going to get lower. But what he does is he's going to stop, square himself, and then turn upfield. That's 
unique. You don't see a lot of guys be able to really do that. I mean, maybe more in the NFL that we see that those creating angles, but what he's able to do from that short area perspective where he's not necessarily going to be able to out leverage guys getting underneath them right here. Low man wins. He does get low, but he's more trying to, he's trying to prepare himself, right? He puts his right shoulder into the chest there and then he spins this way like that's also understanding the space that's going to be there because everyone's on a block right so he's not going to go outside where you see those two defenders right here he's going to just get inside so he's got two defenders here coming down this way and instead there's nobody here so he's going to go that way and get a first down up the field in in that different way so that's exactly how you want to see the short area executed when he's not necessarily the bowling ball for a guy who's got really good contact balance and wants to, I think, miss you make guys miss and arm tackles and things like that. So that reactive athleticism that we kind of just saw where he's putting his shoulder down into the, the linebacker filling, this is another one of those things where he's able to just kind of feel. Running back feel and having the footwork and, and the vision to see things happening, right, is another part of the game entirely. And you've got you know, guys flashing to the inside right here. And this is it's so difficult to be able to stop and start and get upfield. So he's not going to be able to create a ton of yards after contact on this play, but this is again, unique. He's outside intention where he's coming this way, right? So he's going to have a guy make a guy miss with the angle that he's running to. And then he's going to stop and get underneath this other defender right there where his number 58 now gets blocked from behind a little bit and he still gets tackled, but just the unique ways that he's able to move his body for a big, physical i mean he's not super tall but like he's stocky we know that he's muscle bound right he's got a ton of muscle on him and that's a that's a phrase that i recently learned guys that are muscular they're not the the you know the most fluid in terms of being able to get outside and just run upfield and things like that he's got a ton of muscle in his body and his frame and things like that so having the unique ability to move that he the way he does in those short areas is very impressive to say the least and we know that he's very good at pressing the gap and popping it wherever he wants to go one thing that i am noticing while i watch ashton genty tape is this here you got a split zone look so everyone's gonna kind of block this way and i want you just to pay attention to this linebacker right here because this is pretty much who he's reading and who he should be running off of. As he's getting to the line of scrimmage right here, he's going to get caught up on a block. What I want to see a little bit more, and I know that we have already mentioned that he's not like the burstiest or fastest guy in the world. And I think he understands that. He's very aware of his skill set, his talent. And I would like to see him be pressed and pop this out here. You've got blocks coming up right here. And I know you've got some players now coming down. But you're able to set up blocks and get into space pretty well specifically from when you have this much room to operate behind the line of scrimmage you don't have to worry about guys in the backfield there so i would love to see him press and pop just a little bit more but he does a good job of getting getting the first down here the only thing that i have to say about this is in the last five games he's had 30 or more rushes just from those last five games in each of them so you're adding a lot more physical toll on your body as a guy who always goes between the tackles when he's given the opportunity to sometimes press and pop outside so that's just something to monitor for a guy who's again had a ton of carries this year a ton of carries last year those hits they tend to add up a little bit so for a guy who's i think can press the off the line of scrimmage bring those linebackers in and pop to the outside i'd love to see him do a little bit more of that at times but one of the areas coming into the season that he really did need to improve was pass protection. I think the technique is still getting a little bit better, but overall, the effort, the want to, the identifying where those blitzes are coming from has all gotten a lot better. So right here, you see that lateral agility. Again, he's pop outside initially, and then he's going to come up underneath, leads with his shoulders, arm comes around. You want to see that relocate underneath right there to be able to actually block properly and then lock out when you have the the ability to do so. He's just kind of getting his arm around, but he gets the job done, right? He's not getting called for a hold. So at the end of the day, the effort definitely is there from a pass protection standpoint. It's gotten better. He's definitely seeing where the blitzers are coming from and understanding that all as well. As a receiver, I think they underutilize him myself uh, from Boise State's perspective. He's a natural receiver. I think that there's a play against uh, Oregon where he kind of jumps on the right-hand side of the offense or down the right sideline, and he catches the football just out of bounds. So he's a very good athlete, and he can create some of these, these catches in space. Right here, the ball's kind of behind him. You see him kind of flaring out to the left side, turning over his left shoulder. 
balls behind it. He's able to rotate there and catch that football with his hands. I think he does that very routinely, and he makes catching the football very easy on himself. So he has natural hands, I think, a feel for catching the football in space and then turning upfield again, using that ability that he consistently has to put a shoulder into somebody and get extra yards after it. So all of those things being true, a guy who's very good in the short area has that Sometimes bowling ball mentality, you, he's not necessarily going to always out leverage everybody, but understanding his different angles, he has this to his game too. Like he's very fleet of foot for a guy that's as stocky as he is. And this is what I really like about him. I appreciate all the different ways he kind of sees two plays ahead or two moves ahead, I should say, where he's able to make guys miss. So you've got guys flashing on the inside here. Again, one of these split zone feel type of plays where you have that jet sweep motion coming inside, but you've also got you know blockers coming down here. So it, it looks like one thing it feel, and it feels like another where you've got doubles coming across and then the guy's flashing on the inside. Tight end gets beat across his face right here. So you've got pressure now coming inside, right? You don't necessarily want to run it right into that, but also you're going to have pressure here. So one thing that Genty already sees is this, right? So he's going to be able to pop, one pop again and then you have that linebacker come across his face he gets 21s around the ankles but just that showcase of agility that he's consistently bringing to the table is so appreciative and at the end of the day he's so good at setting up those blocks like we talked about in the very first clip and I, again i've talked about it i think he's a very good athlete for his uh bulk and that's one of those things that you're going to see as well typically this is just single back power again setting up those blocks to the outside cutting up underneath and creating more of those arm tackles and reactive athleticism once again seeing that linebacker or defender come in and go low he's able to jump up over it so he's got tons of big plays We've all seen the big plays. I wanted to showcase what he does between the tackles, what he does setting up blocks, those little tiny things that he does to make arm tackles and to create plays like this where he's going, getting into space and someone's coming after him. He's able to jump over him. So all the different things that he does creating big plays because maybe the offensive line gives him a big hole or things like that. But all the little things that he does that are so I appreciate so much and that are going to translate to the league to be able to create big plays. I still think he's going to create... 20 plus plays not just because of offensive line play but because of what he can do himself making guys miss creating those arm tackles and at the end of the day he's got very good contact balance we all know that we've seen it happen time and time again so Ashton Genty isn't where he is just because the offensive line is great which I think it has been for the most part of the season they've dealt with some injuries lately but he individually has those little things he does the little things well the vision the feel for running that position and then all those little short area quickness things a little burst the jump cuts being able to press the offensive line of scrimmage and, and bounce to a different gap he showcases all those things at a consistent basis so Ashton Genty in this because of his own tools as well as what Boise State has done, hope helping him in the multifaceted ways. I don't think he's an outside zone fit in the NFL, much more inside zone and then gap concepts, what he's really going to be asked to do. And I think he's going to perform those at a very high level. So he's a great player and I can't wait to see where he finishes in the Heisman Trophy. I think he can win it very easily. I do think it's between him and Travis Hunter. So I hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown of what he does well, all those little things that add up to create big plays and to create first down. So please, if you guys are new to the TDN channel, hit that sub button, hit the like on your way out, and I'll see you guys next time.